All right, cool, everyone. How's it going? Uh, Brett here from Moonstream Crypto. And so I have, first of all, we have a big announcement. We're going to re renaming the name of the channel here. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we do this live all every Tuesday as well. And if you'd like to find out more about how to join us live, you can find out more at moonstream.io. And down at the bottom, there's a link where you can sign up for these classes. And we're going to potentially start live streaming these. But um, yeah, this is now going to be the Moonstream channel. We'll continue to do the crypto mastery classes on Tuesdays like today and we'll unpack the news look at some charts and uh, do some training on our indicators and then I'll be uploading other periodic updates under the Moonstream brand and of course you can see that at moonstream.io and find out more about what we do there uh, so anyway everyone who's here together with us live I see some uh, familiar faces and say hi to some people Alex Mary Susie Doug uh, Pirate J Rick how's it going Rennie and a couple new names Lisa and so welcome. All right, let's dive into it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go over the news real quick. Uh, this, um, you know, I was I, I always do a couple hours in the morning just to get a feel for where things are. And it's uh, we're in a resting period. We knew that we'd be coming back down, you know, with a high degree of probability. Uh, nobody knows the future, but uh, was predicting that uh, 48.5 would be the top for weeks and weeks. And sure enough, it's, it, it was. It's still kind of digesting. So let's look at some news here and unpack that. And uh, by the way, if you are new here, again, this um, you can find out more about these indicators at CryptoMastery.org that we're going to be talking about. And then uh, the in-depth classes we do called Moonstream M3. Again, you can find all of that at the uh, Moonstream.io page there with all of these, no matter what level of investor, crypto trader you are, you can find that all here. All right. So with that out of the way, um, let's see, we are going to talk about uh, the news that's most relevant. And so I'm just over on daily hodl and let's see if there any, is anything. Oftentimes, you know, you hear me say a hundred times, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. There's not a lot of news out there because there's nothing really moving. And I think we do kind of a slow bleed uh, into the having here with some pockets of opportunity. And uh, we'll talk about a couple of those here in a minute. So uh, synthetics creator, let's see, I'm not really, uh, it's not really worthy, newsworthy enough. Now it's the time for 100x altcoin positions. Yeah, um, you know, I was actually watching a little bit from this guy earlier today. Uh, specifically, he's talking about Chainlink, which I recommended on Friday and over the weekend and uh, is up nicely today. Let's see, um, $19. Yeah, so I was buying and recommending it at $17, had a nice little bounce on Chainlink. It's breaking out into uh, out of a range and I believe will continue higher. So that's likely going to lead the altcoin rally, although it's the only one really rallying. I was watching Render. Sorry, I got to take that screens all around me here. So you know, not a whole lot moving at all here today. So this is the quiet before the storm. There is one chart we're going to look at where the Bollinger Bands are tightening real nicely for a uh, pending move. So we'll get to that. Fed Chair Jerome Powell warns that the U.S. on unsustainable fiscal path. Gee, you think? Record high national debt. Yeah, I think yeah, he was quoted over the weekend as saying it's uh, overdue to have an adult conversation about uh, our budgets and spending, uh, which are unsustainable. So, um, you know, the other shoe to drop there really is the wild card you know now that the etf news is out of the way uh what's uh where's this economy heading do we have a soft landing hard landing i uh, i just heard you know you want to keep pay attention to the small bits of news and information for example new york city evictions are up threefold three times and if that's not a clue toward the overall economy um you know i, I don't know what is i think probably people were you know, afraid of the recession last year, still had some room on the credit cards saying, hey, it's not so bad. Things are going to be OK. And now they're starting to feel it. And so a lot of talk about commercial real estate crisis and residential real estate. Uh, you know, I have uh, I know somebody was a top realtor in Southern California um, and is now cleaning houses. No inventory. People can't buy. Interest rates are too high. So uh, interesting times. And so um. Anyway, uh, let's see. Veteran Trader says bullish on Bitcoin. Okay, we'll look at that. I'm just skimming the news to kind of see what the narrative is. And anytime there's a consensus out there, we know we want to be kind of careful. Let's see. Uh, 708 million institutional money hits Bitcoin and crypto ETPs in one week. Um, yeah, institutions, you know, ETP is an exchange traded product <clears throat> similar to ETF that just sort of encompasses all of them. 
So we're starting to see the inflows come in and that's kind of stabilizing all the outflows that were going out with the uh, GBTC redemptions and also FTX uh, selling and dumping a billion dollars of their own uh, holdings in GBTC. Um, we're not going to talk about meme coins. Our invest, Kathy Wood. Let's see. Yeah, so this is there's not much news out there. They're recycling old news, you guys. Tether hits 96 trillion billion in market cap record breaking profit yeah so that's good news actually because every cycle we hear fud about tether maybe isn't tethered maybe they don't have the money and every time it just goes without uh goes away without any merit so this is good to see that tether has basically uh, signaled they have the the money the reserves the backup and they're profitable so um yeah, we'll keep going on there. Let's see, Binance, Ethereum, Crypto Gaming. Okay, that's about all we want to do here. Let me jump over to Crypto uh, Panic and see if there's anything timely because uh, I think this would be a good week to really slow down and go into the charts a bit and spot some opportunities and, and really look at the uh, indicators and see what they're telling us. So, um, yeah, the <laughs> Binance offering $5 million bounty to out shady employees. Uh, that's a little scary. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it, it's got to be hard to keep tabs on all of these people that are in the uh, crypto industry. And uh, many of them are DGENs at heart, uh, obviously, so they wouldn't be here. Crypto Fear returns his FTX moves to dump more tokens is, all right, we'll take a look at that. That would be worthwhile to look at. Now, keep in mind, they're selling on the OTC market, which doesn't directly affect prices on the exchanges. So, um, you know, that's the good news. And that's where a lot of the buying and selling has been happening. So even though price hasn't really moved much, I mean, I think, what are we up? Uh, a couple hundred, five, six hundred on Bitcoin here today, uh, up 300 now. But it's, it's not reflective of the buying and selling selling that's been happening on the OTC market. So I think once that inventory dries up, then and there's more demand than supply, we'll start seeing the bigger buyers buying on the uh, exchanges. But it'll push price up. But right now, there's a lot of the OTC selling, buying, and um, you know we don't need to go into that too far. But hopefully, you understand that over the counter does not affect the prices on the exchanges, not directly and not immediately. For a variety of reasons, uh, we, um, you know, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask those. Let me pull up the chat here. Seems like there's a comment. Uh, all right. Hey, Susie. Good morning. Thank you. <clears throat> so let's see. Tokens going multi-chain. Uh, so that's probably why Link is is pushing up. Chainlink has a great tier one that allows for that uh, sort of multi-chain interoperability. And so I really want to get to that chart because it's uh, the chart looks great on Chainlink. So uh, let's pull that up, just kind of touch on that and see if anything else relevant is here. Stable coin, Federal Reserve, and so Farmington Bank. Where it's a little early to get into talking about banking, but um, you know, smart people like Arthur Hayes are predicting a banking crisis uh, right around March 11th when the uh, bank term funding program is over. They've signaled Janet Yellen saying they will not renew. And so basically... Uh, they're not going to renew. So we could see some banks go under. The news I saw recently last week that there's a New York bank that is uh, reported positive earnings of 100 million a year ago is reporting negative 200 million earnings because, you know, all these loans and real estate loans, especially in a big city like New York, uh, have to be bleeding them. And that's really uh, t foretelling, I believe. But um, Arthur Hayes uh, indicating, um, and I've shown, we'll look at these charts a little bit here today, that that could be one of many factors that could really pull the markets down in the short term. So what we're waiting for is this, uh, how does the Fed signal they've broken the economy? And so they start reducing interest rates. Uh, you know, it was no surprise they left things steady at the last FOMC. But um, <clears throat> it's... Uh, Pardon me, that, that's pretty clear there. I would say they're going to lower rates, start lowering rates in March. And what could propel that is if that bank term funding program runs out, a couple more bank failures, and then the Fed says, hey, OK, uh, we've got to come in and start QE printing. That's when Bitcoin and crypto are going to start running again. All right. So, uh, but you know, I get uh, for between now and there, it's really kind of a no. We'll watch and see the charts here again. I think we pulled back to 38K, um, possibly lower 32K. I would like to actually see now, personally, I'm not in Bitcoin. I'm waiting for that pullback, uh, except for IRA and things like that. But uh, I would love to see a pullback to 32K, guys. Strong support there. If we get to 32K, in fact, I would have limit buy orders. Uh, this is, you know, not financial advice. 
educational purposes only, but limit buy orders at 32K, 35K, and 38K just to start dollar cost averaging in uh, those levels. So uh, we may, may or may not get there, but that 32K level, you know, uh, even if it's only a wick to test that, uh, we'll look at that here in today's charts as well. Bitcoin Solana takes center stage and 720 million institutional inflows. Do want to look at that. So we'll open that up here. And let's see, uh, anything else uh, you guys have questions on in terms of the news? Solana price rebounds as network restarts. Yeah, Solana had a bit of an outage. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, not good news. Of course, that was kind of the beginning of the end of the 2021 rally when Solana was the victim of a DDoS attack, which uh, took down the network briefly. Pardon me. And so here is, let's just dive into it. Solana price rebounds as network restarts after the outage. The good news is that we're getting all this stuff out of the way. You know, um, I was just watching on, in contrast to this, how Ethereum's upgrades, or there's a big upgrade in Ethereum coming out called Den Kuhn. Um, It's kind of silly how they name these things. Part of it is the city where they had their last uh, meeting, Cancun, and then D, it's alphabetical. So the next one will start with E. Uh, I don't know. But uh, so they're saying, though, you know, that the past rollouts, at least on Ethereum, have been uh, very effective. There was one that kind of went down for four hours, but they got it up the same day. So we are still early with all of this. Uh, so it's good that Solana had another hiccup and it was able to rebound right away. So this was down for five hours here. and But people understand, like software, I own a SaaS company and been doing software for years. You never know which end, you know, where that other end of the spaghetti is connected. If you change something, one character here, uh, it can it can do uh, things, unexpected things somewhere else. So it's good to be part of this early. You know, I like I like that there's still things breaking. That reminds us that we're early and the opportunity is still ahead of us. Okay, so there was a brief outage. We talked about that. Solana up to ninety five ninety. You know, it's uh, some people were speculating we'd come down and retest sixty. I didn't think we would. And you know, Solana, you don't want to bet against Solana. If you remember back in twenty twenty one, I originally recommended it in our August first newsletter at thirty five dollars. I said I think we'll see a pullback here. Uh, our buy entry is thirty five. It did pull back. Nailed the entry. And we, we started selling and taking profits, uh, waiting for a pullback that never came, or it came much later. And so um, this thing's a freight train. It's venture-backed, a lot of smart people behind it. So I would um, not to be betting on a big pullback on Solana. Let's see, uh, major outage. I think we've already covered this. Uh, so they had an outage and they recovered. Is there anything else here? Uh, let's see. Van Eck tweeting, so it hasn't scared away the uh, institutional investors. That's good to know. All right, well, I think we're good on that. And let's see, uh, head of the having Bitcoin miner. Mm, yeah, I don't want to go too far in the news this week, you guys. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of just cover the, the news articles that I have open, <clears throat> and then guide them in the charts. So Bitcoin uh, Solana takes center stage at seven twenty one institutional inflows. Yeah, you know um. It's going to be interesting to see how what leads the the parabola, parabolic rise up, the parabola. You know, is it going to be institutional inflow and then retail dive in, or do we think that inst uh, the retail is going to start pushing it higher and then institutions later? Well, as we know, the institutions are normally accumulating down a lower, and that's a good segue into Chainlink, which has been in a nice consolidation pattern for uh, weeks now and now breaking out. So that's really the answer. Institutions are normally accumulating early, um, but, uh, but we'll see, you know, the ETFs, a lot of, here's the thing, the ETFs that have been approved now, it doesn't mean they have the money sitting there. A lot of them have to get on the call and they have conference call with all of their invest uh, registered investment advisors, RIAs. And then the bosses say, okay, everyone, get on the phones and push crypto and Bitcoin, you know, push the Bitcoin ETF. And then these RIAs get on the phone and they got to start calling the clients and getting, you know, 1%, 3%, 5% allocations. But I have heard that, that they're not allowing their customers to do it yet. So that's a bit interesting, you know, um, but what it means either way, we don't have to know exactly when or why. What it means is a lot of that money hasn't come in yet. So that's why on the one hand you would think, Oh, yeah, the institutions are in, 
now in terms of the Wyckoff pattern, you know, they're going to go into markup phase. But the institutional money and hedge fund money, the ETPs, exchange traded products, uh, they're still raising that. So that's going to continue to come in and that's good. So that's my read on on all of that. Let's see. I don't see any questions. So let's see what else comes in. Bitcoin reported the scene inflows 703 million last week. And again, it's just happening on the over-the-counter market. And if uh, if you guys are new, what that means, basically, the analogy I use is in the old days, the stock market would have bearer shares. You would have a certificate that if you wanted to sell your stock shares to your mother-in-law, you know, to your neighbor, to your dog, you could say, here, you're now the owner. It's basically handing it to them before they had these exchanges. So over the counter is where basically the institutions, generally those larger transactions that can say, uh, you know, like the US government selling their Silk Road Bitcoin can say, hey, we've got a thousand Bitcoin and uh, we'll sell it for this much. So that's why it doesn't affect uh, and doesn't go on the, uh, the exchanges. Any questions on that? I can go a little deeper, but we talked about that last week and the week before, I think. So um, I'll drop a trading volume. Just going to skim this, you guys, it's to look for anything alpha on that. I know many of you are busy and want to get to, you know, the good stuff. Show me the beef, right? So um, picture of Gensler here unraveling the future of crypto compliance. This is con going to continue to be a thing um, for well past Gensler being gone. They have to. But uh, I think, you know, oversight is going to be good and uh, we'll clean up a lot of the bad actors. Tokens are getting multi-chain. Let's just talk about this a little bit. And, you know, it, it's kind of becoming a buzzword. Chainlink, again, is one of those that is uh, at the forefront of this uh, inter-chain, cross-chain interoperability. Uh, you know, Cosmos does some, this is a new one I'm not familiar with, Axelar. So this is probably an advertorial. Be careful with um, where you get uh, your news and also, is it a new narrative? Because a lot of these PR is an interesting animal. Uh, if you have a new product like this company and you want to get the word out, you hire a, a PR firm to go out and just blast press releases all over. Companies like Blockworks will say, well, that sounds interesting. We're in the business of attention, so we'll print the article. And it really should not be seen as an endorsement uh, for the uh, the product. Okay, that's why I'm not going to go into what they do. Just more of a what's going on out there, right? <clears throat> so uh, Bitcoin, didn't we already talk about this? Okay, uh, Bitcoin's price at risk. Let's talk about that a little bit because I think it's a fear that people have. And, uh, you know, FTX selling potentially more of their Bitcoin. They recently moved 3 million in tokens to Coinbase, Binance, and Falcon X. Generally, you see coins move over to the exchanges uh, from off um, chain to uh, to sell, okay? Similarly, when you see uh, people moving large amounts of coins off of the exchanges into cold storage, that's more of an indication they're going to hold. And uh, let's see, FTX's recent sell-off saw Bitcoin in the 38K region. We've been eyeing that region for weeks now, and I'll show you that as soon as we pop over to it. Um, so yeah, so basically some people are calling for a crash and significant market sell-off, you know, don't be afraid of this. It needs to refresh and sort of bounce. We need to, it's like jumping off the roof onto the trampoline. We need to get a good bounce out of this. So I, ideally we do come back down to 38 K and, and potentially lower. So what sell pressure could be causing that, you know, FTX, uh, bankruptcy, Proceedings to kind of liquidate uh, some of those millions of dollars of uh, the holdings that they uh, discovered uh, from FTX and Alameda. Uh, let's see. So here, FTFX Alameda moved eight tokens. All right. Yeah, eight to different ones worth three million. So not a whole lot. Not a whole lot, you guys. So let's just see. FTX uh, transferred out of FTX to Alameda, mostly Ethereum. Interesting. Uh, I guess they've sold most of their Bitcoin already. A kind of an interesting mix of coins here that you wouldn't expect. Um, a lot of these are degen coins that we don't really even follow. OXT Orchid was one a long time ago. Phantom Coin do good projects. Rest of these uh, barely heard of. Reef a little bit, but never heard of Dodo. Looks rare is a good project, but um, some of you I know are trading at Looks Rare. Alex uh, Looks Rare. Here you go. Uh, be careful on that if. If they start dumping a lot of that, how much 11 million looks rare, 824 
thousand dollars not not terribly high but it's a thinly traded coin so that could cause some sell pressure in the short term and uh, let's see you've been hearing more about this mantra mantra coin but um uh it's not on my radar so we'll kind of stick with maybe i'll pull it up anything you guys want to look at here and we can uh do that let's see but again not much in the news at all monero Mm, yeah, Monero's kind of, it's not that uh, exciting. The narrative, it's been around long enough. It's sort of like, who cares? It's a privacy coin. And um, I don't know, since they dumped it and along with the Haven coin, which is built on Monero. And uh, we really liked Haven coin and um, caught a nice 100% bounce on that. I was expecting a second 100% bounce, but uh, it bled out just based on you know the targeting of the SEC on these uh, privacy coins. They don't want us to have permissionless and privacy. Um, Pirate J, Monero dumped 33%. Oh, they're delisting on Binance. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry to hear that. It says, I uh, have a lot of Monero. Yeah, see, they, they are on, in the crosshairs of the SEC. They don't want privacy as much of that as the narrative for crypto and Bitcoin. Uh, it's a shame that they are now targeting uh, Monero, so we'll have to look at that. It might might be a buy opportunity, but you don't like to, to try and catch a falling knife. Uh, I don't like to I like to buy into strength and or a strong, solid bounce. So let's take a look here at uh, these uh, movers. Some of my alerts here, we've got the DXY up over 104. Uh, DXY up, Bitcoin down. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Now, these are a couple days ago. These are yesterday's alerts. ENS is up today, so we'll have to take a look at that. I'll, um, interesting, Solana barely moved, even with some uh, network uh, security issues. I'll hit the gray box just to get clear those out. We've got Ethereum up 2.5%. And what else? Lido up. We'll take a look at Lido. Yeah, I'm waiting for that bounce in Lido. And maybe uh, AVAX uh, Optimism was looking good as well yesterday. Those of you in M3 Active Trader did put a buy alert out on Optimism. We'll certainly uh, pull that up. And uh, by the way, if you are watching the YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe to this. We're dropping some really good information here in Alpha every week. We'll come back to the uh, movers here in a moment and let's kind of dive in here so i've got chain link up on a one hour four hour it uh it has pushed up higher i like to see that it got right up almost about 20 and uh let's pull this up uh, say was in the news recently too i do own some say some of you guys are familiar with that now how do you close out of this article here usually it'll give you a box and uh it didn't so all right close that entirely um chain link let's take a look at this and open it up and uh, we'll see what our indicators are telling us. Nice. Now, isn't this kind of like a long, deep cup and handle? I don't know. That's a hell of a cup. But the whole point of this chart is that uh, we have been consolidating since April of almost a full year, you guys, in Chainlink. It dumped down into this region right around $5.60. Had a lot of so you know buy blocks uh, down in there and under accumulation. So started to see higher lows right down in here. That was an early indication got above its 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages. I uh, do see some sell pressure in this range on chain link, $28, call it 30 and 37. So uh, I do, I bought, I bought the breakout here at 17. So I'm going to be holding on to this and uh, riding this uh, up and uh, I've got alerts set here. If I don't, I'll kind of create that uh, on the chart. Sorry. I've got a cell phone going off in the background. I got to, uh, Turn that off. So 27, I'd say 28 would be a good sell area for Chainlink. But um, <clears throat> I do see it going much higher. If you draw this chart out a bit, the um, and uh, some people are predicting $100 Chainlink, certainly doable up in this range. If we do get up to old highs, you know, that would be around $50. That would be a 2X, but uh, certainly reasonable. You know, I think we could have a big, a big push higher in this range, $100 range, that would be a 10X, uh, would have been a 10X when we were watching it back at $10. That's the thing, you don't wanna to wait too long on these because then uh, it diminishes considerably. It's still a 6X potential on Chainlink, but uh, that would be into the markup phase and going into, you know, potentially, you know, July, summer, mid, uh, you know, either that or Q3, where you might see that distribution. So good time to be accumulating. I would like to see, you know, pull back here to retest, this $17, $16.50, dollars as support, that would be a great place to uh, potentially pick up some more chain link. Uh, because again, all this was accumulation. 
institutional accumulation. And uh, let's see, what did we see in our indicators? Let me pull up our crypto mastery indicators on a weekly time frame, just kind of see what we might see in the short term. It can be, it can ride this upper wave and stay overbought for a while. Like I liked it, it bounced off of uh, this 80 region and is pushing back up into this uh, region on the weekly. So the weekly on the trend strength indicator is our longer term time frame. And what I'll do is hide the ERI. Uh, we have a signal that's gone green again. That's our second or actually our third indicator that uh, we use in conjunction together. Getting a bell though, you guys, getting a key and a bell on the weekly time frame on the trend indicator. So I think, you know, Chainlink is probably my top pick right here uh, for all of these reasons. And what we'd want to see is, and also look at Chainlink versus Bitcoin to see where's that money flowing. If Bitcoin, if uh, Link starts pushing up in the link BTC pair, that would be another clue that this is going to run. So in terms of our custom indicators, you can find out more about those at cryptomastery.org. These are custom designed by us and our quant engineer, professional trading partner, mad scientist as well. And uh, these uh, seven indicators really give us an edge. You definitely want to be using these. If you're not already using these, you can get them free in our M3 crypto classes or sign up for them at cryptomastery.org. These seven indicators plus the radar, the multi time frame radar, for sure and absolutely give us an edge in these markets. Uh, if these are new to you, stick around and we'll show you some uh, signs of how that's been guiding us all the way along. Call the market cycle top to the week and call the bottom in January of 2022. So at any rate, um, let's, sorry, January, 2023, got it a year off. The key and bell. So let me put on the early reversal indicator and turn off these order blocks. So, okay, this is good, you guys. So we see an order buy block right in there on our ERI Pro, which is soon to be released. The early reversal indicator uh, these buy blocks are heavy buying. So we saw that down here, boom, shot up. Saw it here on the weekly time frame, bought it. So Link, seeing more buy blocks in this range, I like to see that. That's the strongest indicator that we have. And then what we always also do is use our trade checklist, right? So let me come down in here. You can find that at moonstream.io and just click on the trader success checklist. You can get that for free. I'm going to actually have a shortcut for it. So I'm going to pull that up and yeah, there we go. So what this lets us do, especially if you're new to trading and technical analysis, we've created this trader success checklist in which you can click on the different boxes and give it a score. Uh, let me open this up here in terms of the actual file okay but this is the one you can download at the crypto the moonstream crypto.io site down at the bottom okay it's just to go here trader success checklist and you can download this uh this checklist here and what it does is when you have a three or higher on the score see down here your trading success score this is free you can download this that would be a trade worth taking and then adding to the position. This is all for educational purposes, obviously, but adding to the position as more of these lines align up. So is the ERI showing a green up arrow? So we saw that here on Chainlink all the way back here. So on the weekly time frame back in September, we saw a lot of our signals aligning. So we caught a lot of this move here in uh, September, October. And it was, and so has the signal line gone green? Has the TSI line gone green? Let me just slide this over so you guys can see this a little easier. So if you're seeing this for the first time, I do see some new names. Our secret weapon is when these start to align. So here we have the green arrow, the early reversal indicator, and then the TSI going red to green, then the signal line. These are all different quant algorithms. So when they start aligning, you got more confluence and it de-risks the trade considerably. And so in that regard, if we were to use these, here's that trend indicator showing a bell. That's great on a weekly time frame uh, as the indicator of a mid green line. I won't go through all of these, but uh, even if you're not using it indicators, you can use this checklist. So for things like bullish engulfing candle patterns, is there the candle body at support on an exponential moving average or a trend line? Check. And now you see we have a trend uh, trading success score of six out of 21. I would be in this trade at three or four. So 
uh, looking at Chainlink, um, you know, even if we drop down to the daily time frame, it's a little bit more noise, but um, not too much. Similarly, we had a green arrow right back here. And so that's funny, actually, there's somebody that uh, that I connected with recently, don't know him very well, but he was saying that he loved Chainlink back in here. And I said, well, it's going to go down and then it'll be a goodbye. And sure enough, it went down and then we bought, we were looking at it here and bought the breakout. And so he's like, hey, I'm a believer in what you're teaching. So ERI, our mantra is ERI, TSI, signal and bell. When we have all four, it's go time right here. Early reversal indicator. This arrow is the simple version of the actual what's going on behind the scenes. If you wanted to see that, if you're a more experienced trader, this is the actual indicator. Uh, there's a Keltner channel in here. There's some other specific patterning in here, but that's painful to look at, right? So we just, these vertical lines and red lines are the buy and sell arrows on that indicator. So uh, that's the ERI. The uh, TSI, again, when it starts to go red, it's time to get out. We see these things oscillate uh, all the way down. Uh, usually the trigger is below the 80 line. So if it starts to go red below 80, then we're usually getting out of that trade but it can stay up on this top area for quite some time. So right now, this is a great time to be in Chainlink. And the trend indicator also gives us a potential sell. So the bag of money indicator, you can see it right back here is usually when the eight count sequence, sorry, the seven count sequence has exhausted. And that's a good sell sign to wait for a new key and a bell. So it might be looking to take some profits on Chainlink tomorrow. I don't know. Our, our other tried and true Sell signal is that upper Bollinger Band. Looks like we could be up here touching it. Uh, not quite, but um, you know our modified Bollinger Band. If you guys uh, don't already know how we do that, let me know. Just comment in the chat and I'll share that secret with us. Uh, so this is a modified Bollinger Band uh, for crypto. And whenever it gets above the top blue line, invariably it pulls back down. And uh, either resets going sideways, but a good time to take profits. People always ask is when do I take profits? And I say, if it gets above that Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band, uh, that the modified Bollinger Band, that's a good time to take some profit. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, uh, but again, I think Chainlink has quite a bit to go. I'll be holding on to this for uh, much or more of that ride, but just showing you the uh, signals that we have. The other one I want to look at is the average true range. Okay, so that has gone into entry mode as well. So if I turn off the the ERI, yeah, so this chain link really looking good. We'd like it the more of these aligned. See how it was going sideways, sideways, sideways on the daily and went into exit, uh, you know, exit uh, zone and then went to entry zone back here. So we have everything kind of in our favor with chain link. Uh, the other thing I'll uh, show you is many of you heard me talk about this. Typically, a breakout will happen on the third or the fifth attempt, okay? I've been trading since late 1990s. I was a day trader, and uh, we've just watched a lot of charts have easily my 10,000 hours in. So what we've noticed, what I've noticed is usually these break above key levels. And if we zoom out, right, when in doubt, zoom out, this zone between 13 and $16. Previously, if we go farther enough out with Chainlink, it was initially resistance back in 2020, pushed up above that, came back, support, 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 flipped as resistance. So that's why a really important level, Chainlink right around that $16.50 level. So it tried here, failed once, twice, three times rejected. So right here, I was saying, all right, we'll wait for the fifth time. Sure enough, rejected the fourth time again. And then we saw the breakout, uh, the 21 and 50 exponential moving averages kind of breaking up above that. So what would I expect to see? I would expect to see a retest and then to go higher. That's generally what we have see happen. And um, so, you know, if we see like a spike today up in this range, I might sell half my position and look to buy back on a uh, retest. Um, Tony says, I don't think I have any link. Not a good time to get in. I think it's a good time to get in, but um, you could nuance this by waiting for a pullback on our radar down below in the corner. We created this to know when the market cycle tops were. And when it's all red, you don't want to be getting in to something. The weekly is bullish, but we have a bearish on the daily. And that would indicate to me that it's probably going to pull back in a little bit. And so uh, what we might want to do is look at the DXY 
Um, this is a pretty basic class. We go into much more detail on our Wednesday class uh, tomorrow for M3 uh, Active Trader, where we look at things like total market cap and the DXY and that whole relationship. But uh, just in short, you know, the the way to play it is if you think and you would agree that um, it could go here. I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of these, my barometer is if it goes back to its old highs, not saying it does, but just comparing to the other coins out there, which ones have the highest potential if they just go back to their old high? Now, at this point, Chainlink is maybe a 2x to the old high. Beats a sharp stick in the eye, right? So the, um, but, but, but I do think this is at least a 5x back up into this range in this bull market. So, um, you know, if, if it, if it buys, if it, if you bought some here is what I'm saying. And with some more to buy more, if it goes back in this area, otherwise known as dollar cost averaging, then you effectively lower your overall price. But, um, we could have a uh, chain link. Uh, take off here. Let's just see what the, let's see, uh, link BTC. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so normally we stick with the USD pairs, but this is a good indication of kind of where's the money going. And even though Bitcoin's up 500, what do we see here on the link BTC? It's kind of a cup and handle, kind of a janky one though. That's more of a, it's a I'd like to see a deeper rounded cup. Um, on the uh, chain link BTC though, it's kind of hitting some resistance there. And, you know, so I would I would say some kind of pullback and then a breakout above that. I'll put an alert uh, on this here just to see. But uh, I think long-term chain link is, uh, is a good one and it's showing strength right now, which is, is encouraging. All right, because uh, most of the market is uh, pretty much shut down. We'll just kind of look at our watch list here. Kind of have a quick look. Uh, so Chainlink, um, I think that's enough on that. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. I guess most of you are probably here for that. This is my uh, my guideline, my cheat sheet, where I think we're going with Bitcoin. And I've had, to hear, had this on here for months now. So uh, sure enough, we did push up into the Fibonacci golden pocket. Uh, just touched on that briefly. Saw that sell off. You know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, we had that that level identified all the way back into you know December at least. So no surprise there. It's come back down. So it's encouraging. Bitcoin is uh, still above its 21 day EMA. Kind of a small cup and handle forming. I don't know. It's it's probably too much. Uh, it's too hard to say. Uh, we were looking at the possibility of an inverse head and shoulders here. So that's really what we're watching for is this upper trend line. Do we get, uh, does this reject and go down as I believe it will? Or do we start to break higher as this signal would indicate this arrow right there? Let's say it doesn't go and we break up above it. Like I, that would invalidate this initial 38K, but I think probably we do drip, we fail on this. I don't see <clears throat> a positive catalyst right now that could propel it higher. Really, we'd like to see, you know, if you're holding Bitcoin, sorry, um, but it, you'll be happy in the long run if we get the bounce to this 30k 38k region why there we can see this uh, considerable resistance area back here hasn't retested and then all the way back out if i go to a weekly a little easier to, to show you guys and um <clears throat> my quick quick pop quiz for the for the record by the way how many of you guys like the light background charts how many of you like the dark background charts uh i'm a, i'm a light background guy but i want to make sure you guys can see this okay so uh, if you could just let me know in the chat, that would be useful. And the information is the same. But uh, anyway, so here's this weekly chart. Why at 38K? Again, when in doubt, zoom out all the way back here. 38K strong resistance in uh, January of 2021. Broke above it. Acted as support for a while. Lost that and went down to the 32K region. So these are both very important support and resistance zones. And so we'll, we'll come back to the terminology here by the bounce versus by the dip i'm working my way back toward that and uh thank you mary so okay let's just take a look uh the radar is blocked by my image oh that's right thank you guys uh let me do this i'm gonna turn off then in my image so you guys can see this i might have to move that somewhere else in future classes but you're right thank you i'm blocking the radar shame on me so I'll, uh, there we go. I'm gone. I'll come back. So the radar is down in the right-hand corner. That's our multi-time frame indicator that uh, is included in the Crypto Mastery 
um, indicators that you can find at cryptomastery.org. You can read about uh, what people say. We've, we've got many, many more um, feedback and uh, I hate to call them testimonials, but reviews uh, of these indicators. And they are the backbone of our M3 active trader class and uh, also our higher level trainings as well as coaching. So uh, at any rate, uh, you can learn more about those here. This class is both teach you how to use those and also look at some coins. But in this specific example, 38K, you can see this line here was strong support right until we lost that level. And then we also lost 32, which also became resistance, right? And then we came down all the way down to this for 16.5 level, which I had sort of somewhat, somewhat luckily called that when we were back here, I said, we'll go to 16, five. Uh, I don't know. I thought we might go to 14, but I said, I, I put it on my uh, Facebook May, it was May 19th, right in here. We were at 30 K. Uh, people, uh, were saying like the editor of Bitcoin magazine saying we will never, we won't go below 30 K. Um, but, but I was like, I think we're going to go below 20. So sure enough, got down here. And, um, <clears throat> so point being, we really should, retest at least 38k if not 32k so what's the difference between buy the balance and buy the dip i did a video on this for our m3 members and whether if you'd like to learn more about that that is at moonstream.io slash m3 for m3 crypto that just means we have all three modalities for uh, we have indicators we have live classes every wednesday and you get daily access to me. I'm usually posting an update, if not multiple ones, every day in the Signal chat, which you can see here. Great community, by the way. A lot of smart traders. Many of you are here from M3. And uh, yeah, and and I, I think would agree it's a great program. You can see some of the comments here. So, you know, not to make this commercial, guys, we want to add to this community. Uh, we are going to be raising rates at some point in the future. So go check that out. Moonstream.io slash M3. We do have a new monthly option, a membership area with videos. Also have cheat sheets and things like that to help you. You know, what is a trade worth for you guys? A winning trade. Could it be worth 5K, 10K? Easily. I have candlestick chat pattern cheat sheets and DCA investing worksheets. This is the same worksheet I use with our coaching clients to help create a portfolio, an optimal portfolio. You have a portfolio tracker you can use. These are all Google Docs and they're interactive. Also trading patterns as things like that. And uh, and yes, I do trade and my uh, monitors continue to multiply. They're like rabbits. Uh, it seems like I need a new one, uh, another one every year. I've just added a vertical monitor over my right shoulder, which is pretty cool. So I can just see my uh, long watch list. But I know you guys aren't here for that. There's me hanging out with my uh, my boy, Jay Powell. Uh, that's a cutout, obviously. But uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> go check that out. If you're looking to really improve your skills and your profits in this bull run, go check that out at moonstream.io slash M3 and just read about all the things that uh, are included there and some of our happy members in their hats. There you go. Cool. Um, so is there a question? Uh, you guys are like 50 50 uh, on the color background. Light, we have two for light, one for dark, three for light. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I never know. So we have three to one. I like the light better. So, all right. Alex says, I'm currently in a trade for some upward movement on Bitcoin, but I still would love to see 32K. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, that's kind of a big question mark. But once we hear, hear me now when I say this, dramatic pause. This next bounce, the real bounce, which which our indicators will call, they're designed that way. And we have unpacked all the nuances on these things. That will be the best time to get in. Uh, right now, I still, uh, still say exercise some caution. This next dip, the if we bounce hard off 38K, and uh, that'll be a great one to catch. It might be a weak bounce though, and it could go lower. So that's the question. By the bounce, what that means is we will wait for our indicators to tell us this is a bounce. We don't, we don't want to buy just by the level. The difference is by the dip, if it gets to 32K regardless, I will be buying. 32K, could it go to 31? Yeah, I doubt it though. Uh, I think probably it will front run around 35K. Okay, so this whole zone in here, 
uh, is a buy the bit, buy the bounce, buy the dip kind of zone. So buy the bounce is there. It's also here. I would say we've got two areas of buy the bounce. I'm trying to copy this, you guys, so I don't have to retype the whole thing. But but let me just show you. So this up here, up here, when we will know it's time to buy, specifically when our early reversal indicator triggers first, we have a bearish ERI up here. And uh, that's why I think we're more bearish. Our radar says bearish. Our trend strength indicators is bearish. I wouldn't short this until this goes below 80. Kind of like stochastics. This is not a stochastics, but kind of like the stochastics rules above 20, bullish, breaking below 80, bearish. This is uh, just so you're, you're, if you're seeing this for the first time, by the way, let me go in the settings. This is the, the math behind this. Clearly not a stochastic. Uh, th this is a... But this and the EURI are our secret weapons. The other indicators really help sort of determine the, um, you know, the confluence, which way this thing is going. So uh, I know it looks like a lot if it's first time seeing it, but it's not. It just look for the arrows. ERI, TSI, signal, line, and bell. So right now we are in a bearish ERI, the early reversal indicator, hence the name showing bearish. We have a little bit of a push higher here, though, off the 21-day EMA. So there's conflicting signals. And so, hey, when in doubt, I would stay out. And here we have, again, that uh, headline, Crypto Fear Returns. As the FTX moves to dump more tokens, is Bitcoin price at risk? So what I would be careful of is a fake out rally because this is generally what happens. The market makers, they'll spike this above here. Everyone's watching this trend channel. The leverage degenerate uh, day trading guys will go long at 50x leverage thinking this is it then it'll sell off toward the end of the day. Guys, as long as we're closing below this line, do not go long because we've seen these. Remember these candles back here when it was pushing up on the ETF news? This was a big green candle and the leverage longs were piling in. Sure enough, though, the market makers pulled that down. I was watching this on a one hour chart as it happened and with a coaching client and it shot straight up and it came right down. And that's what the markets do. So liquidate the longs. And it went down and down and down. So be very careful right in here. If we start seeing a close above this level, say above around 43,500, maybe 43,000, 44,000, you know, certainly 44,500. If we're closing above then, we're going higher. But right now we have this strong resistance overhead. And uh, with that trader success checklist, by the way, you can use that for uh, multiple things so if you have a score of six right but then you start to see some bearish signs like overhead resistance that will reduce the score so we almost have a red radar not fully so we can't count that but overhead resistance so I'll check that and then it lowers the score by one pretty fancy we've got some uh, math stuff going in the background uh, and then bullish, uh, the upper Bollinger Band. Again, if it gets above that upper Bollinger Band, we use a third standard deviation versus the uh, default seconds, the two standard deviations. But here, if we see that, that now our score is coming down. We have other formations like the inside, three inside down. And so these are intermixed with our custom indicators. And so you guys have it, a little bit of everything. But, um, you know, that's where this, this I still use this. I just do it in my head, right? Plus one, minus one. But if I'm like plus three, plus four, I'm in the trade more than likely. And so that's what we're waiting for. Again, ERI, TSI, signal and bell going green. That's a great sign that this thing's going higher. But here's here's our, our number one thesis is we come down in this 38 range, get a bit of a bounce back up to the upper range of that, probably another fake out. But if we're below the 21 and 50 day EMAs, then coming down. This is by the dip zone right in there. So anyway, uh, yeah, there's some comments in here. M3 is a great group to be in. Thank you, Susie. And that's all I see. So all right, so let's uh, let's jump back out. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Okay, question from Perry here. Whether 43K or 32K, no matter what, aren't these prices still really good? Com yeah, yeah, exactly. Compared to what this whole market will likely become in the longer term. So exactly, a pairing is a good, good point. Now, we're pr primarily swing traders. 
So, you know, we have a longer term group called our retire rich group. That's more buy and hold for five, 10 years, you know, or until the market cycle top in the M3 active trader, hence the name, we're looking to catch these swings. But either way, you're right, these are gonna be good prices looking back. Uh, because as you guys know, if you're in M3, I have that study. Do I have it here? I'll try to pull that up. A study, the 10 factors that could take us to $155,000 Bitcoin in 2024 and 210,000, I think will be the market cycle high. Whether that's end of this year, that's a long way to go. I think that's probably in 2025. As much as I wanted to believe we'd see a left translated parabola, I, at this point, it's not feeling like it's there. However, Bitcoin, when it moves, the biggest gains in Bitcoin happen in a relatively short period of time, as we've seen before. So we just have to be ready for that. And, uh, and you know, I, I would even say, even though you guys call me Cryptodamus, I reserve the right to be wrong. There's no there's no reason that there can't be a giant push candle up above this right now. So I would use this as your zone of uncertainty. You know, if we push higher up in a big green candle and close above 44.5, yeah, I would be in. I'd be going back in. Um, and so Ethereum looking more strong, uh, in my opinion here. So let's see the, if the here. I'll just say the wild card, though, is let me turn the camera back on to make a point. The big wild card is, and, and nobody knows, is is that uh, you know if the ETF money starts really pouring back in in earnest, they don't want to be late; they want to be early, and it's just not clear how much of the GBTC selling has has filtered out, has uh, settled. You know, going through traditional banks and mutual funds, it has to settle. And there are also wash sale rules that you can't just sell something and buy back essentially the same security that for, for tax reasons, you know? And so it's a little unclear on how that all works on the ETF side, but I think that money is still filtering through the system. Plus, let's say that you sold your GBTC and you wanna move it somewhere else. There's, you know, still a red tape bureaucracy. Uh, and it's also not clear when these ETFs are really gonna open up to the retail side, you know, we've heard reports, people calling up Vanguard and trying to buy the ETF and they say, yeah, we're not selling that yet. Isn't that interesting? So, um, so this is the wild card, you guys, uh, and we just don't know. I think we go lower, but we'll have to see. Um, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. ETH does look bullish here. We have, in contrast to Bitcoin, uh, we're mostly green on the radar. I'm going to have to move me uh, somewhere else because uh, you guys... Um, let me turn that off so you guys can see the radar. Well, you know what? If I do it in this view, yeah, you can still see the uh, the radar right here. This is the radar. Okay, I'll use this. I'll leave this view up. Mostly green on the radar, you guys. Above the 21 and 50 day EMA, uh, we don't have bullish X, uh, ERI. I know these acronyms are a little tricky at first, but this trend strength indicator, bullish, nice velocity, nice slope on that. We have a signal line as green, guys, and we have a key, potentially a bell forming, got the green line on the trend indicator. ETH looks much stronger here to me. Uh, I do hold ETH in my IRA, along with other coins like Solana and some Bitcoins. So um, anyway, full disclosure, but um, hey, look, um, keep an eye on ETH here. If it closes today above the 21-day exponential moving average that's bullish and we did have although it was a tiny one had a bullish engulfing candle right here so if we were to go back to the trade success checklist and kind of start over is there an eri there isn't one but is the tsi green and above okay tsi a green and above the 20 line it has been for a while so that's a check and is a signal line turned from red to green? Do we have a key and a bell? Okay, so on this one, we have a signal line check. We don't have the bell yet, but that would be tomorrow or potentially, you know, tonight after the closing. We do want to see these on a closing basis because price can move. These are based on current price. So tomorrow at the end of the day, if there's a bell, then I'll be putting a strong re-recommendation of a buy on Ethereum because it looks pretty good. We would have three, at least three out of the total amount. So, and then 
Um, we do have the trend indicator has a midline of green. We just don't have the bell. So this is really useful, as you can see, for giving yourself the uh, guidelines, especially if you're new, to know how and when to get into a trade. Is there a bullish engulfing candle pattern? Well, we had one yesterday. It was a small one, but I'll still count it. Is the candle body at support? See that above support? And is it above the 21 and 50 day exponential moving average? Some of these are really simple. Some of you might be more advanced traders. Look, I get it, but I've used all of the Elliott waves and Fibonacci's and spirals and all that other stuff. Uh, it doesn't make you any better of a trader. If you're day trading, maybe gives you targets. These are tried and true indicators, and I prefer simplicity and the confluence of more versus less, right? So so right there, price is above the 21 and 50. Is there higher lows forming? There is, right? So there's a trend line support. And uh, so, you know, that this, this is a useful tool for you guys uh, for taking trades. Is it at right here, trend line? Yes. Yeah. So now we have a score of five out of 21. And is it breaking above resistance? No, not yet, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Let's go down here. The volatility index. Now, we haven't talked about the vol index yet. That's our one of our other indicators. So if we go over here and look at Ethereum on this uh, four hour and even the one hour, the indicator specifically we're looking at is this one down here, you guys, the lower one, the vol index. This is a great confirming indicator on the slower time frames when it comes out of the red zone and uh, into this black zone. Let me just see if it does on the daily. It's rare that it gets down below on the daily, but uh, sometimes we can mas massage it a bit on these time frames. Generally, I use a four hour or an eight hour because you see back here when it came out of the lower end, let's just open this back up. This came back and retested it. So the buy would have been right here on October 19th. And would that have been a good entry on Bitcoin? Yeah, that was right. It was perfect right there, you guys. Uh, so the vol index is another confirming indicator because Bitcoin went up it's like 80% from there. So using the eight hour on the vol index has been very um, prescient. And so the last time it happened right, down, right in here. So January to open that up. So caught this right in this range. And so far it's come up here. I want to make sure I get it right about, oops. Let's see. Let me do that over for you guys. I just want to show you why these are so effective for us. Up 5%, but it's just getting started. And then uh, the average true range also just going green. Now, those of you who have been here for a while, we don't usually use the eight-hour time frame, but uh, I've been playing around with this more on the vol index and the average true range. So we are getting this nice entry uh, signal right there and right here. So we want to uh, keep that uh, in mind and on our radar. Okay, so let me just jump back out into the longer time frame here. Let's take a look at some more coins and let's get to our hot movers. Uh, do you guys have any more? Let's see uh, some comments here. Perry says can't get a touchdown while you're sitting on the bench. And exactly, you got to be in the game. So I do like this candle quite a bit here. So in terms of the score on this, let's just go back to that on this uh, trade success checklist. You know, we are kind of getting this on the uh, eight hour. You know, that's kind of a judgment call, but let's give it to the the, um, the check. The rocket now, the rocket, I, we haven't, we don't see too many of these. Uh, how many of you guys love the rocket indicator? It is something that uh, we discovered. I discovered sort of this pattern and you guys, yeah, we, we coded it to an indicator. It is a bonus in the Crypto Mastery indicators. But uh, here, when you see a real body above a 21 or a 50-day EMA with sort of the wick down below, we call it rocket on the launch pad. Yeah, as you can see, the guys, everyone in the chat saying the rocket's amazing. They love it. So whenever we see one of these, we definitely give it a check mark because invariably, this thing shoots up in the air like a rocket like a bottle rocket has to have the fuse has to be sitting on the launch pad. Uh, we cover the nuances for that in the uh, M3 active trader group tomorrow uh, Buy blocks. I mentioned that a minute ago. So we're not seeing buy blocks. We're not seeing Bollinger bands or three inside up. And uh, we do have the, the ATR though. Right? So here, so that's what I wanted to find. Uh, we have, um, uh, let's see a couple of things. Is it breaking out of a downtrending channel? So I will give it a, a checklist check for this too. So we're, Ethereum has breaking out of a downtrending channel. 
one of the things we love using in these markets is the trend channels because once they break out of a trend channel, typically they're forming a new one. So we're just seeing that right there. So we get to do another check on that. Is price breaking out of a downtrending trading channel forming a new uptrend? Yes, it is. So now we're at eight out of 21, you guys. And also we get to uncheck this bearish overhead resistance, right? Because we don't have bearish overhead resistance. We had it back here. We've broken through that. So now when we uncheck that, what do we have? We have a nine out of 21 on Ethereum. That's a very good score. And I would even go, go so far to say uh, Ethereum is a, is a screaming buy right now. If, but you want to want to wait for uh, the uh, close. So anything that happened, markets can turn on a dime. So I'd be watching this. Those of you watching end of day, if it closes here above this 21 day EMA, preferably with not too much of a wick of the overhead topping tail, we want to see this push higher. But I do think this looks to me like Ethereum is going to push higher and another signal we can look at also are these uh, these pairs like ETH BTC. So ETH BTC not looking terribly strong below the 21 and 50 EMA. So, you know, but the ETH US dollar is looking pretty good. Okay, you guys, uh, let's go down. Is there anything else you want to look at? I'm just going to skim and see if anything on my personal watch list is looking good. Um, optimism, I mentioned. Optimism, similar pattern to ETH. And look at this. It's got the uh, TSI, sorry, the signal. TSI here, signal key and a bell may be forming. And this is the one where that Bollinger Bands are tightening. Look at those Bollinger Bands tightening up. So this this indicates a, a move is coming. Probably should have looked at that on ETH, by the way. So, all right, look, yeah, I had a feeling ETH and uh, some of these, uh, the leaders tend to work, uh, operate similarly. So ETH does look good with these clenching. When you see the Bollinger Bands tightening like in a C pattern, that means volatility is low and it's ready to break out. So I like ETH. I like optimism for similar reasons. Let's take a look at this on the chart. It's up 4%. And... Um, you know, look at that. It's just pinching. It's ready to break out higher. So uh, looking good there on uh, optimism. Now there's one other one here I wanted to see. And let's go back to the Crypto Mastery watch list. And then we'll get into some hot movers. How are we doing on time? We're about an hour in. We're making good time, you guys. Uh, let's see. Somebody wants to see Pendle. Um, never heard of it. Uh, we'll We'll have a look. But first, let's see, Hot Movers. ASM is one that landed on our radar of Hot Movers last week. Yeah, and it's continued to go higher. That's why we do like this, uh, the top market coins on trading view. It'll give a good idea because oftentimes these will, I see a couple familiar faces here, Metis and ENS and uh, BitTensor. So we'll come back to this. And um, But here, ASM, last week we put it on our radar and it's up another... Just going to eyeball it to the exact day that it was. So it's up about 100% since last week. So Assemble Protocol. Remember, you guys, we talked about that a week ago. And that bugger has shot up 100%. Would you look at that? Uh, very low volume, though. And it's hard to find these things. It's uh, this. Well, this one's on Coinbase. Okay. Well, then why don't I do this? I'll put the watch list. And I want to put it on the uh, appropriate uh, exchange so we don't rule it out because i was about to say but we can't really buy this hot movers i'm going to get rid of this one and keep it on coinbase so maybe one to keep an eye on i would probably wait for a pullback on that and uh yeah look at this on the weekly time frame this thing is above its upper bollinger band this thing's going to pull back more than likely but um the other thing to notice too is this uh these it, a lot of these even if they're on coinbase they're on a lot of these margin exchanges Mm, not not as bad as some, but you know, BitGets and the Bybits and the MEXCs and Bitfinex, you know, you've got uh, margin trading on that. So that usually pumps these a bit, but that's a hell of a chart. I'm going to leave it under hot movers. Let's also take a look at near protocol and I'll kill that Bollinger Band real quick so we can uh, zoom out on this a little bit. But uh, near, I, you know, I do like near. But it needs to pull back here, probably in a good range to start watching near on a daily time frame. But as long as our, you know, if we have a red ERI uh, and, and, and the TSI is red, I'm never long. Um, with rare, rare exceptions. If we have a rocket and other, everything else looks good. But you, ERI red, TSI red, no go. 
So micro crabs, DYDX, not doing much. Trax, just not doing much. Injective, you know, all red on the radar. Immediate disqualifier for going long. Injective due for a pullback. We did very well with this one getting in around September, October. But yeah, it needs a pullback here. All red on the radar. And look at this. If, if you are a day trader and want to short this thing, that would be the signs. TSI, red below 80, all red on the radar. Did we get an ERI? Don't have an ERI, but that's fine. And the signal line about to go red. So injective, uh, not looking great here. Say still looks good. I do like say Polygon Matic. A lot, a lot going on in the markets. We are looking for some rotation into altcoins, but where? Which ones? Filecoin, I did get an alert on the other day, but just it's below the ice. It's below the 21 and 50 day EMAs. It's drowning. Uh, this is dead to me until it can get above the ice, above that 21 and 50 day EMA. So uh, let's see, anything else we want to look at here? Uh, I want to see, look at storage real quick. Uh, keep an eye on these decentralized storage platforms like Filecoin and uh, Storage. And there's a number of other ones. We we do uh, watch those closely in our Retire Rich classes. But uh, this is trying to get above the, the 21 and 50 day EMA, but it isn't there yet. So I would watch it, maybe set an alert. I'll just do that because I, I do like this sector. And so storage, if it goes back up, uh, comp is another good layer one, but this chart looks terrible. Um, so just immediately ruling these out is the, one of the bigger benefits of having these indicators, knowing what to look at, what not to look at. Is there anything moving, you guys? Uh, let's take at some AI coins and um, then I'll take a look at some user choice. Akash, okay, Akash does look uh, interesting here, but... What would you say our score is here, you guys? Here's a pop quiz. Well, we've got potentially an ERI forming. That would be one, but that's it. Um, that That's it. There's a three inside up pattern, but, um, you know, so that would be, we'd want to at least have the TSI go green or one of these other ones. So a caution, not quite ready yet. And if we draw an overhead trend resistance, you know, it's got to overcome that. So that's a no, that's a not right now. It's not on the hot list anymore. What do we have? We have a bit tensor. This thing is just really expensive. So it's already, it's over 480, you know, um, and uh, it's, I know what it is. It just seems a little bit foreign to me. And and look at this, one of my uh, old nemesis, the graph. Um, please be careful of narratives this year, you guys. Uh, the narratives, like the graph is the Google of the blockchain. It's going to be, no, they don't have a, mo a monetization model. Um, th this, I've always lost money with this one. So Anyway, uh, it's pushing up a little bit. I don't recommend this one myself. Just skimming down through some of these AI coins. So why don't we go this? Let's jump over where the there's some action. Uh, and uh, the hot movers. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Tau, I saw that. That's a bit tensor. Uh, you know, a um, couple other requests. Helium and Pendle. All right, let's do those and get those out of the way. HNT as a favorite of mine and us here at Moonstream Crypto originally recommended Helium in July of 2021, uh, but you're all red on the radar. It would not be long Helium right here. Uh, this is not what we want to see all red on the radar. We have the ERI is bearish right there and we have the TSI red. Could not ask for a worse time to be buying Helium. Um, this is, a, you know, I love the project. Probably I would be looking around the 50-day EMA. However, wait for our signals. This is a great example because you see how Helium twice now is pulled back to the 50-day EMA. We got our green arrow, our early reversal indicator, and then coincided with our trend strength indicator going green. That's where I'd be saying, hey, I'm going to buy. A couple days later, we had the signal and a key and a bell. It sort of ran out of steam. But one of our new strategies to do this is to build positions over time with the ERI arrow. So this would have been a hold pattern, not necessarily a sell, and then accumulate more when we put in this. This is a really great signal because what do we have? We have an ERI. We had a bullish engulfing candle right there, and we had our TSI going back to green, and then we had this nice buy block on this ERI Pro, and then another bullish engulfing candle. So what I would say is if you're holding if the, uh, helium, hold on to it, but dollar cost average, wait for this next ERI. And hopefully you'd want to make sure it would be a higher low because that's how you build positions over time. Amateurs go all in and go all out. 
uh, professional traders, they build a position over time. Um, right now isn't the time we like to buy. This is that buy the bounce. The bounce is E-R-I-T-S-I. That's why if you're not using Crypto Mastery indicators, at the very least, the very least, go over to CryptoMastery.org and add these to your, your uh, arsenal. Uh, you can get a month free if you sign up for, for six months. Very reasonable, $100 a month. You get all seven indicators, and uh, that will do more to improve your trading than anything else. Uh, or you can go and sign up for the Moonstream group, and you get the indicators included. So check those out, both of those, as well as the other free stuff at Moonstream.io if you're watching this on the replay. Okay, so um, that is a Helium coin on a weekly time frame. Um, it's also, it's it's overbought. I love Helium. I'm going to buy the snot out of it once it comes back down into a nice support range. But our trade success checklist would give this a negative score and don't want to be buying it at this point, in my opinion. So uh, let's see, uh, one other one, let's see, Helium pen Pendle. Uh, let's check out Pendle. That's a new one. Uh, where is it? M-A-X-C as futures. It's on Binance and maybe on Uniswap. Don't know. Let's just check out the chart. Okay, interesting chart. Um, very interesting chart. It's almost like programmatic buying. That's a beautiful chart. It's almost too perfect. So, uh, wow, look at that. I uh, wish that was on our radar sooner. So let's see, Perry, tell us about Pendle. Maybe we'll look it up. I'm going to add that to our watch list. You know, this certainly looks like it has more upside. Uh, thanks for uh, putting that on our radar. We'll uh, take a look at that here. Um, I don't know what they do. Let me just see here, Pendle coin. And we'll find out uh, what it does, CoinGecko. To tokenizing trading yield. And uh, let's see, I'm, I'm more familiar with coin market cap, so I have to dig a little bit on. I want to see whether they do. Traded on centralized exchange, daily trading volume. I want to know what they do. Uh, and so what we could do, I'll just pull that up on another chart while we're skimming this, but I'll definitely keep it on our radar. Coin market cap, there we go. And then beautiful. I'm sure I could find it digging around on this, but let's just pull it up here and go over to about... And let's see, coin total market cap, 771 million. The total fully diluted. So it's almost fully diluted. Not much chance they're going to drop price with uh, a, you know, releasing more tokens. Whale holdings. The whales hold 64% of this, though. That's a little bit concerning. If you get the whales suddenly start dumping this, that thing could uh, dump hard fast. Just saying, uh, not hate nine Pendle coin. Just don't know enough about it here. We have, I'd like to see what, if there's any investors. It's a protocol that enables tokenization and trading of future yields. So what I do like about that potentially is there's a monetization model. They have a way to make money. So anything in the trading field or yield that uh, has potential for making money, that's good. Gives users more control of future yield, providing optionality and opportunities for its utilization, big fancy words as usual. And so um, we'll keep an eye on it. Pendle, kind of an interesting, very interesting chart on the daily. Here's the problem though. Uh, it is all red on the radar and it's too far above this. This seems to come back down. I think this is getting artificially pumped up. It's about 80%. It's 87% above its 20, uh, 21 week EMA. And if we put a Bollinger Band on it, I'm almost certain it's going to be outside of that range and do for pullback. Okay, well, I mean, not so much. That's the thing. These can, see how that Bollinger Band, it'll come back down below it, but then the next candle can push it a little higher. And it's been riding the upper range here. I would certainly not bet against it, but you'd want to see a little bit more on the bullish side for this you know, on and a radar at least ticking to the green. Let me go back to a daily, but uh, it, it is a beautiful chart. Lots of um, buying. This is money flow, these green blocks. Beautiful chart here. We've got bullish engulfing candles all the way up along here. Do you see this? Uh, let me see how far back we have. Well, not all the way, but bullish engulfing here, bullish engulfing there, dipped down a bit, had a three inside up. Kind of lost, then bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing. So, yeah, that is uh, 
Just what I'm hearing. The perfect chart indeed. Yeah, Pendle. That's uh, okay. Well, look, I mean, this is slow, uh, steady accumulation. It's $3.22. Problem is, where do you get it? You can't really get it easily. Uh, yeah, I did. I have an account with MEXC I haven't funded yet. And I'll be doing a little bit of margin trading there or trading some of these other coins we can't get because it's not on, you know, it's not on Coinbase. It's uh, wait, not yet. How far back is this thing? It's it's fairly new project, it would seem. Um, let's double check it on the uh, charts. How long does it go back farther? Yeah, not not too far. It was May of 2021. Well, it's been around. Wow, look at this, you guys. Imagine if you were buying this up at 0 0.04 cents, and now this thing's at $3. Crazy. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Thank you, uh, Perry. So let's uh, let's hop on over then. Let me just see. What is this? I've seen. Okay. Yeah, that's not a good-looking chart there. So let's do this. Let's see what is looking good. I like to look for signs of strength in the midst of downward pressure. So I'm going to go over here to the top coin movers on trading view and give it a good old refresh just to make sure we're looking at the most recent data so what we want to see here is a minimum you know around 50 million in volume you know these like observer that's it's too low volume and uh, those are dangerous uh, access protocol let's see what this is maybe i'll close some of these other uh, charts but let's see access protocol see on super charts and um, yeah, no, this is the stay away from this. Just be, this is big pump and dump margin. Look, you can see the personalities on these, regardless of our indicators. Uh, this is a low volume pump and dump on access and then it'll, it'll pull back here. Don't chase this. Uh, all right. So get rid of that one. But usually we find a gem here every week in the top movers we have, let's see again, I'm looking for at least enough volume or at least enough market cap uh volumes low uh market cap 493 million orber i'm not familiar probably not worth looking at but let's see i have my spidey sense maybe says maybe so let's see with that but again uh, very the, the pumping pumping and dumping is the personality of this coin I'm not saying it can't go higher later but it just to me it's a bit uh bit janky um with the caveat though of one of my uh, favorite sort of patterns here let me clean up this chart a bit you know we do have this long macro trend line well it, it's it's depends how you draw it there's two two versions of it there's that which is not out of the woods yet and then there's this yeah i mean but just look at there's no volume i mean this is uh i want to be very careful with these and um volume is not not even registering so okay that's you know orbler mental note fine uh not worth i'm not going to touch it but what else do we have wall street meme not a meme coin guy um what is the circling supply it's just let's all right my curiosity has peaked wall street meme mania um no just a chart no okay I had a feeling. All right. Uh, be careful with meme coins, you guys. Uh, that is complete degen moon or bust. This one, I can't pronounce it. It's a no. Velo. I'm familiar somewhat with Velo. I want to get sort of closer to some of these that I, I am more familiar with. So I'll give this. This is our last questionable um, coin here. I think probably see those those wicks though this just tells me it wicks around a bit you know maybe for it's on crypto.com where else can you find it uh, for most of us we're on us based exchanges can't touch this one uh, it's not worth the risk to me uh, pinching of the bollinger bands could it go up in this range it could kind of a nice little momentum play if you're a swing trader day trader uh yeah i'm not going to get into it farther here uh let's see so let's just jump ahead cody i've heard good things of and um haven't looked at that in a while. While well, that's loading, what do they do? Developmental tools, enterprise. Let's take a look at the charts here. Let that load. Let's kind of see if we get a bunch of things loading here at one time. And while that's happening, decentral games, gaming always interesting. Uh, low volume, kind of low market cap. I'll skip that. Metis we do want to look at. Metis has been a huge mover. And uh, so while that loads, we'll come back over so, to Cody. Yeah, so Cody looks interesting. It's all green on the radar. <clears throat> pardon me and it's above the 21 and 50 day emas 
has uh, money flow positive, but it's outside the Bollinger Band. I think, uh, where can we find Cody? It is on Coinbase, so that's good to know. And let me see if I get the same or similar. Yeah, so I think this is interesting. Uh, this could be, this could see some follow through. So now I want to see, is there like a strong resistance area? You know, we had a double ERI. We have a, a whatever indicators are green, green, green. Something about it's a little janky, but uh, for a DGN swing trade to get it up here to 90 cents or so, it should push higher up until probably this range. But, uh, but I don't know. That's up to you guys. I'm not here to give financial advice. Just some interesting charts, seeing what our indicators show. Let's get to Metis here because Metis fell off our radar. We were watching this. Um, this is 2021. Now, this is a payments platform, you know, competing with um, Solana, allegedly. And then there's other ones that are coming out, claiming to have much faster transaction speeds, you know, like Sui and Say. That's kind of their narrative. So let me clean this up a little bit. Um, Metis... So, uh, you know, we, we Metis can really move, though. We saw this with this buy blocks pressure coming in. It had a lot of upside. As we know, Metis is the created by the uh, the founder is good friends with Vitalik's mother. So I think at, at some point this could be very friendly, either merger with e Ethereum Foundation. We don't know. But right in here, it went up 4x took our eyes off it for a minute back in December and it went up 400%. So what I am going to do is keep a close eye on Metis. I want to know as, as soon as it starts breaking back above this level and I'll set an alert for that, right? So it is all, it is back up close to a hundred, which is interesting. It's amazing. Um, and I'm just going to say 95. I like to buy into strength. I don't like to buy when it's below. So this is my kind of line in the sand, yeah, $95, I want to know, but the pinching of these Bollinger Bands looks solid. Our trend strength indicator is green. Let's do our trend uh, trader success checklist in our head. So we have an ERI, check. We have a TSI, check. We don't have signal green yet, but that's next. Uh, is uh, We are above 50-day EMA, so that would be a check. And... Um, I, it's almost enough for me to want to get in, but I'd, I'd wait. I want to wait and see how this thing plays out. I'd rather buy it up above this resistance level because uh, this thing could could go much higher. Again, speed of transactions and they um, compete with Cadena and uh, Solana and the, the myriad of other ones that are competing against the number of transactions. But Metis one to watch. And that is on our watch list is it should be. Um, oh, you know why it's on a different exchange. So uh, let's not use this one. Let's use the Coinbase version just because most of you are on Coinbase. It looks very similar, pinching of the Bollinger Bands. So uh, the yeah, that's on a number of our watch lists already. And uh, there you go. So let me just go down here. Why am I in the AI coins here? Let me get to the Crypto Mastery area. There we go. Metis and uh, Pendle. I want to move both of those up. Okay, anything else you guys want to look at here? We're kind of, I'll do a few more of these. I'll just put these in the hot movers, Pendle, Metis, and uh, let's see, near protocol, no longer in the hot zone, but ASM will leave in. All right, guys, making good time. I want to make sure we didn't miss anything. So what else did we see that we recognize? We saw BitTensor. I just think BitTensor is too expensive. Uh, let's see, what is Dust? Uh, it sounds like Rust, which is the uh, programming language of, blockchain that's why it looks familiar so i have no idea what this company does and we're gonna open it up anyway um nope chart chart's dead to me that's a definite uh, no go all right anything else what about shorting access right now access is that a coin uh, perry wants to look at woo let's look at woo and then we'll talk about shorting be very careful with uh shorting you guys especially with margin let's see so woo is on KuCoin. You got to get your stuff off of KuCoin, by the way. Good reminder. And um, that deadline is, is I think, is passed now. And you should be in withdraw only. So what is this Woo Network? Um, what do I see? I, I think it's, uh, I wouldn't touch it right now. I wouldn't buy it. But um, where might I buy it? Right above? I want to see it above, at the very least, above the 21 and 50 period EMAs, exponential moving averages. So I'll do a alert on that at 
0.37193, whatever. And uh, but you know, I, I'm it's red here. I I also have to see the TSI over 20, the trend indicator over 20, and one of these other ones bullish because this does not this mild support very low volume let's see the volume though been going down this is not a bullish sign you don't want to be buying when the volume's declining like that uh in general not without clearer signals so uh these are all red for me i uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't touch it myself average true range still kind of an entry zone but um well, i tell you what watch what happens when the bollinger bands tighten maybe it starts to break back out again uh, as of now, I wouldn't uh, go near it. Let's see. Access protocol is on Coinbase. So that's uh, um, so I would. Uh, yeah. Question is about shorting this. Um, yeah, it's it's above that Bollinger Band. But the problem with shorting that here is the the TSI is green and going higher. Uh, sometimes we see rejection there, but this trend strength indicator, that's what TSI means, trend strength indicator. This is a buy signal. I would uh, be very careful shorting that one and probably wouldn't do it unless it's for a day trade to pull down below the Bollinger Band. But there you, you can see that this re respects that Bollinger Band, that modified Bollinger Band. As soon as it's above, it pulls back, back down below it. I uh, did that here and here and in here. So probably this pulls back, you know, enough for a, a bit of a short. But, uh, you know, with this kind of, the, the thing that gives me pause on that, if it comes down 10%, is that worth it? Here's the here's the the danger of this though. If I can get this thing to go away, uh, is that the, the push is on high volume. This is a lot of buy volume here, and it's also going green on the signal. I would not short this. I think it pulls down a little bit, but probably pushes higher tomorrow. Uh, that's my uh, my wag, my wild ass guess. But that's what I that's what I would do. I wouldn't short it. That's that's because there's also not a, like a really strong resistance level. It's already pulled back from the high. All right, let's take a look at Say, and then we can wrap up, you guys. Uh, let's see. Say, I uh, I do uh, own some Say. All red on the radar. Kind of ran out of steam, though. Uh, it's not looking bullish. It's, um, let's see. I think I, I might have sold my Say, actually, waiting for the bounce. But down in this red zone, I would wait for an ERI, TSI, and a signal line on, on Say and or a radar. Right now, we're all red. Not a time to buy Say. The, only thing it's good is it's holding the 50 day EMA, but we have to realize how far this thing came, you know, really it, it's red on the TSI. We have order blocks back here. It's, I think it pulls back a bit more and uh 45 cents. You can see, I have an alert already as a reminder to buy at 40.45, 45 cents. You know, these topping tails on the weekly, this is sell pressure. People are taking profits and let's see do i have i don't i sold my say i'm holding some suey god these all start to sound the same but suey also kind of overbought here looking you know these topping tails would indicate it comes back down in so um you guys not a whole lot i would uh, caution you to not be looking for something that isn't there i think uh, you know those markets are sort of weakening and selling off from the high if we go back to that bitcoin example everything follows Bitcoin, right, and this overhead trend line resistance, I believe, leads us lower back into that 38K region, which is a buy the bounce area when only when our indicators start going green. Or if you get the trader success checklist, again, that's over at moonstream.io. All the way down here at the bottom, you get a free trader success checklist. You can sign up for these classes live every week. So please do that. Join us here every Tuesday. Uh, Monday newsletter, also free, some great content there and uh, some free reports you can download. And certainly if you'd like more uh, hands-on help and help from me personally, you can do that. Find out more about that in these services down here in the bottom, the M3 Active Trader. That is daily commentary, daily access to me. Ask your questions in the signal chat and uh, our class tomorrow. We usually go a little longer. We go in a little more depth macro markets, total market cap, DXY, et cetera. Thursday, we have a retire rich inner circle. Those are more longer term buys. You can read our investment thesis here on this link. 
and we are looking for distressed assets, cryptos that are down 80, 90% and recovering. We're looking at emerging markets like metaverse, AI, NFTs, and gaming. And the combination of those together is going to be huge for investors coming into this next bull run on one of the big narratives. And also next generation NFTs, uh, tokenization, those industries that'll be potentially and likely the new Netflix and Amazons. So that's more of the buy and hold mentality through the bull market, and then uh, do some coaching and mentoring. Some of you here are coaching students. Uh, I don't have a lot of time for that, but for some of you, that might make sense. Uh, here, we are here to give everybody a little bit for everybody. If you just want to have our monthly newsletter, we do a monthly pick every month. Mike, my business partner, writes that. He's excellent. And our top pick of 2021 went up. Uh, it only went up 18,525%. That was Phantom Coin. And we had some big winners as well. And then, of course, indicators, uh, no matter what you're trading, I know there's probably some smart traders here, there always is, uh, you, no matter what you're using already, the Crypto Mastery indicators can definitely give you an edge. I promise you. So, and, uh, and then there's this blockchain bottom line for beginners, if you'd like to check that out. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. Is there anything else? Uh, let's see. So if you have, say, I would hold it in do dollar cost average lower. When, when, you know, signals start to turn bullish, the, this market is, you know, it's in a consolidation area. There's no reason for it to go higher right now. Uh, Perry says, where to get the indicator package again? That's uh, over at cryptomastery.org. But you can find everything we have right here at moonstream.io. And as a reminder, this channel is now going to be the Moonstream crypto channel. We'll be doing some shorts and things. Uh, but here, the Crypto Mastery Indicators, this will take you to CryptoMastery.org. I promise you, these are the best indicators that I've ever used so much. I've given up many of the other ones. I still use other ones in conjunction. Like, you know, I still use an RSI. But let me just show you something here, since you asked. Um, you know, the RSI and the money flow gave us bearish divergence, where back here that was heading lower. And I was saying, I think this the price comes back down to reflect this. So, you know, sure enough, that was there. But um, also, and more importantly, you know, these green arrows, the early reversal indicator on a monthly time frame has only fired four times in history. And these were always at the market cycle bottom. Back here in 2012, boom, shot up here in 2015, here in 2019. Now, we didn't have them then, but these are automated. So... We did catch it here, and I said, this is it. It's time to get back in. January of last year, people thought it was crazy. We launched M3 Active Trader in the depths of the bear market around 16.5. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, Myrene put the link for Crypto Mastery, and uh, um, for sure you want to have those. Uh, it's 97 a month. If you sign up for six months, you get a month free, and uh, that is our the basis of everything we do here. Uh, and so come to the classes every Tuesday. Hopefully I shared some nuances. Do you guys have any questions on the indicators? Because sometimes we go fairly quickly and I want to ensure that uh, you guys are following along. So let me just pull up the Crypto Mastery list one more time. Did we look at Saul? We kind of barely looked. We didn't really talk about Saul. It's just not doing much. Solana is very just all red on the radar right here. That's like a big red stop sign. And um, and actually, hang on a second. Um, the the ERI I, we continually. All right, this is good. So, if there was a bearish ERI here on a weekly time frame, I'd be saying get out of the markets, because that was what got us out of the markets. Let me show you. That was one of the reasons we were getting out. Let me turn off the Bollinger Band so you guys can see it. But that ERI is so effective on this what weekly time frames and if you want I'll explain what it does it's not some black box magic uh you know but see this arrow right here that triggered on the weekly time frame and we had a bearish engulfing candle now I was also watching the monthly MACD but this was a clear sign to get out and um and then also the trend strength indicator these two alone when they are aligned are so powerful on daily weekly time frames this was when we were like it's it's let's i was pounding the table get out of the markets and then and then we had a bit of a bounce right we had a, we had bullish eris 
we had a bounce and then we had the bearish on the weekly back to red here out out of the markets so on these weekly time frames we're not going to be married to hundred thousand dollar bitcoin narratives uh you know i i believe we get there for sure but if we start seeing a bearish eri and this tsi is red and an all red radar i'm going to say get out of the markets i don't care what the narratives are i'll say get out because it has proven time and time again that uh, to be effective and then just wait wait for the next bullish one eri tsi do you see that uh you guys uh this just it, it makes trading I don't want to say easy. It makes it easier and it de-risks a lot of the trading because we, here we went up 88%, 90% exactly to the Fibonacci golden pocket that I was forecasting. So it's a little bit of good old-fashioned TA, but it's just it's just that confidence builder and clarity of what's really going on, those indicators. So uh, Pirate J, uh, the link, yes, it's uh, cryptomastery.org. And Myrene is working with you. Yeah. Guys, you cannot not have these for this bull market. I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. I've used all of them. I've used the market ciphers. I think you find that very confusing. Um, these, for me, are are it. And I'll, I'll tell some of you know the story. I saw these before I was involved in this uh, with the owner. And I saw them. I'm like, those are fantastic. I'd love to work with this guy. Serendipity stepped in and our paths, we were introduced in January of 2021. And I was like, I really, th these are fantastic indicators. Uh, I helped create one of them. The ERI was an accidental discovery, that early reversal indicator, um, because I was looking for patterns to get us in earlier. And uh, those of you that know, you know that that's been kind of one of our our, uh, our top ones. Uh, so anyway, enough about that. But uh, for sure, go over there. Make sure you have that these indicators. And uh, this is one more chart I, I typically show on our class tomorrow. But we are due for a 27% pullback. We While well, we were from up here, you know, this chart says a lot. Not being able to get above 44 or 5 means more than likely we drift down into this 40K, 30K which would be expected. That would be a 20% pullback, which we almost got, but we could get as much as a 27% pullback and still be in an upward trending channel. And then that's, the, even if we go down to a 32K level, that would be 33%. Well, we saw that all the way back here, 37% back in August of 2022. So we're still in this macro upward trend channel. And that's why we'll be looking for these signals to nail the bottoms, buy the bounce and buy the dips. All right, uh, Alex says the Solana ERI TSI is looking good. Let's see, where's my Sol USD? I think it's probably down here because I was holding on to some. But uh, there we go. ERI TSI, let's have a look, Alex. Uh, well, on the daily? Weekly, okay, yeah. So the only thing here is it's a bit overextended. Um, the but you know the ERI back here. Alex, are you looking at the Sol US dollar? Um, because the the TSI is bearish on the weekly. So, uh, upper trend channel. This uh, I don't know. Alex might be missing something there. This is a no go for me. TSI red and below eighty. Big red, no. Red on the radar, no. Also, the other thing, the trend indicator shows a bag of money. This is a profit-taking day. I would not buy Solana today. I would wait for a new key and a bell on the weekly. Uh, and um, and even on the daily, it's we have the red midline. So I know it's a little bit to, to learn anything new, you guys. If you're seeing these for the first time, I get it. But all you have to remember is ERI... TSI signal and bell. That is our mantra. The ERI is this green arrow. And since you guys have stayed to the end, this is what it really does. Okay. We made the arrows on there to make it pretty and easy for most people. Uh, for those of you interested, the, what I was, this is an older oscillator we were going to deprecate. And I said, hey, wait a minute. When the oscillator gets down below three or below five and back above 20, in three time periods, it has a very high correlation to go to the other side. So the color of the midline has to do with a Keltner channel. 
that's something Joe added in. But you see this when it comes down and pegs at zero and gets back above 20. What that really means is that it was a lot of buy pressure and to move that back up that quickly. Okay, so basically we're following the footsteps of elephants. We're swimming in the swim lanes of the whales, right? This takes a lot of money and momentum. This is not D D Gen day traders doing this on, you know, as long as it's a high enough volume coin. But since we're talking about Solana, this is institutional buying here. And you see that inflection point, boom, that got it past 20 in two time periods. This is a strong buy. And similarly up here, it was right up above 99 and it dropped suddenly below 80 institutional selling, whale selling. Okay. So, um, and we're approaching the bottom, but it's not enough. We want to see that velocity and speed. And that's when you get the green line and the red lines, which correlate with the arrows. We just printed it up a little bit. But you can't argue this was an ideal time on this candle to get into Sol and uh, on a daily time frame. And um, again, the confirmation of that would have been the this here, this candle. So what do we do? We leg in, we build positions. And then, uh, so I would say wait on Solana. It, uh, it's not, not looking particularly strong to, to me uh, with that. But we wait, we'll wait till the signals align. E-R-I-T-S-I, signal and bell. Okay, um, Perry says, at least Bitcoin recently, a monthly candle ended up green barely. Okay, let's look at that. It's because uh, it, it's very astute observation because we were watching the, the monthly candle and I was wondering last month, it still was bearish, um, but it was green. It's just, without looking at it, I already know it's a spinning top. Now, at one point, it was looking like an inverted hammer on Bitcoin. So it's still a bearish candle. Here's what you're referring to. And but, but it also would signify that this is a down month. So we had five months bullish. So the, even though this is green, that's still a spinning top. And so it's better than an inverted red hammer. But what that also means is we're more likely to pull back this month. Even though February is generally an up month for Bitcoin, here's what we have. We zoom out. Now, if we're in this rampant bull market, we can go six months in a row, but we're not in the parabola yet. So zooming out, when in doubt, zoom out. Here we have five. We have one, two, three, four, five up months in 2019. And then we had a bearish month. So it's really interesting. If we go back farther, let's count candles, shall we? So we had one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right in there. And then then another bullish one here. But five, five is generally about the most. Let me go farther back. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some of these were pretty, um, pretty weak. That's 2012, though. That's a bit far. We want recency over trying to find an area that works. But it's one, two, three, four, five, and then a bearish. So one, two, three, four, five months, and then a bearish candle. So it's really unusual. The only time we've gone six months was in that last bull mania. And therefore, I would say February and maybe March are, are down months. Uh, we can clearly see this resistance. So guys, I wouldn't be looking for longs right here. I'd be waiting for pullbacks for optimal entries. But uh, but yeah, at least it, at least it wound up uh, green, Perry. But uh, at one point, it was a big, ugly red hammer. And so these indicate indecision. So anyway, we're running a little bit long, you guys. I've got to wrap things up here so the recording isn't too long. But uh Thanks for joining us. And uh, if you're watching the YouTube version, please like it and subscribe. We're trying to, we're going to grow the channel this year. We're going to start doing live streams at some point and I'll be doing some shorts. I've got our new video editor who joined us uh, for pushing some of this content out in the shorts. So I'll uh, look for that. And if there's anything you guys want to see, uh, please let me know. And uh, Pirate Jay, I see your name popping up all over the place. I was in another group and I saw you were a, uh, a moderator in there, but uh uh, we uh, keep us updated on Pirate Chain, by the way. That thing, um, yeah, uh, we want to keep an eye on the Pirate Chain because that thing comes back to life. Uh, that thing can certainly run like it did in 2021. All right, sounds good. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you. Thanks so much. Enjoy the week. And those of you in the M3 group, we'll see you tomorrow. I uh, Thank you, Perry. Appreciate the compliment. Yeah, these are fun. Uh, we'll do more of these, but you know, I want to make sure to keep it always live and entertaining. And um, you know, so 
I think we covered it pretty well today. If there's anything you guys want to see and dive into, maybe I'll have a, another unique study for you guys tomorrow, next week. But uh, we do dive deeper into all this uh, in some really interesting studies on the uh, M3 class. So um, check that out, moonstream.io. You can check out all our stuff. Cool. I'll see everybody. Oh, and you get a cool hat when you sign up for M3 Active Trader. This is the last one, though. We have to get some more hats. <laughs> That's made. They're going fast. Okay, guys. Talk to you soon.